Hello and welcome to Space News. My name's Mike. So glad to have you here. Let's talk about radios. Today we're going to go through this article by Jason Rainbow. SpaceX gets E-band radio waves to boost Starlink broadband. E-band being extremely high frequency, larger bandwidth, more information. It's going to be very cool to learn about this. I have a few other supporting tabs here, but we'll, we'll go through them as, as they come up. Starlink currently has just under 5,000 satellites for their Gen 1 mega constellation. Uh, they operate in the K-band region, and that Starlink constellation is used to uh, connect you, your person, to wherever, anywhere else. If they want to pick up, you know, 100 million, 1 billion customers, they're going to need faster communication. And to do that, they need to use higher frequencies. So let's talk about that. SpaceX has secured conditional approval to use extremely high frequency E-band radio waves to improve the capacity of its low Earth orbit Starlink broadband constellation. So in this photo, we see a stack of Starlink V2 minis, which SpaceX says are designed to fully demise during atmospheric reentry. This is one of the rules that has been set up for any sort of entity that wants to throw vehicles into space. They must be able to burn up within four years or five years of the end of their mission by themselves. So typically you have a propulsion system that will push your rocket at the end of its life down closer to the Earth so that it may burn up during re-entry. The Federal Communication Commission said March 8th it is allowing, so that's a couple of days ago, SpaceX to use E-band frequencies between second generation Starlink satellites and gateways on the ground, alongside its already approved spectrum in the KA and KU bands. For you nerds out there, K-band is, uh, like typically radios communicate between the 1 to uh, 240 gigahertz. That is because once you get into the higher frequency bands, you experience a lot more interference with things, even as small as raindrops. And so it's just easier, uh, the technology exists already to have solid communication below 40 gigahertz. But now that those, uh, add more, as more and more companies have continued to put vehicles in space and take up those bands, we need to, just like IPv4 uh, with too many computers, we need to create a new technology to increase the amount of, uh, of computers effectively that can talk to each other. That's probably not the best way to explain it, but anyways. So IPv6 was created uh, to replace IPv4 and in very, very much the same way, we are getting higher frequency bands to increase the amount of data that we can transfer uh, between satellites and between you know, terrestrial vehicles or terrestrial whatever objects at any given point in time. So SpaceX has, uh, is now also permitted to communicate between 71 and 76 gigahertz from space to Earth and 80, so 81 to 86 gigahertz Earth to space. Very cool. Having radios with different uplink and downlink frequencies will allow you to transmit and receive at the same time. I presume I just that, that it makes sense. They're, they're, the fact that they are kind of within very close proximity of one another isn't as important if they are using bandwidths that are far enough apart, uh, if their central frequencies are far enough apart. And so you'd be able to filter out the other signal, the one you don't want, uh, much easier you know, the farther apart they are. You can imagine that filters typically look like this. Around your central frequency, you have a really high amplitude, and then by the time you reach 3 dB on either side, you've rolled off quite a lot. Uh, oh, I think it's over 50% power. Uh, don't quote me. <laughs> so 71 to 76 gigahertz, space space to Earth, 81 to 86 gigahertz, Earth to space. Using up to 7,500 Gen 2 satellites, SpaceX is allowed to deploy. That is a crap ton of satellites, and imagine, that's just for SpaceX. We have all of these other constellations, there's OneWeb, there's Kuiper, there are whatever constellations the uh, you know top Chinese companies are going to put into space, top Russian companies, top Indian companies. So there's going to be just more. The number of satellites in space is going to explode. The FCC deferred action in December 2022 on whether to allow SpaceX to deploy the other three quarters of its Gen 2 constellation. So they want 30,000 satellites that are currently uh, only being allowed to deploy is at 7,500 which includes spacecraft closer to Earth to improve broadband speeds. These closer to Earth satellites will have a path or trajectory that must constantly spend a lot of time over Russia and China, and it's not clear that some of these entities will be interested in allowing uh, communication to ground from you know, these American companies. 
We'll talk about that once we get to the article. So the regular regulator also deferred action at the time on SpaceX's plan to use E-band frequencies, citing a need to first establish ground rules for using them in space. Very new technology. Uh, SpaceX's proposed operations in E-band present no new or increased frequency conflicts with other satellite operations. You can imagine that if you are at lower frequencies, um, let's say between one and two megahertz, and your bandwidth is a uh, tenth of that, well, now you only have 10 separate channels for you to send your information over. Whereas if, you, if you're working at 50 megahertz and you're, I mean, a tenth of, and, and you have that same channel width, you now have 50 times, don't check my math, uh, the amount of channels that you can use to, to transmit information side by side. You know, on that spacecraft. And, uh, spacecrafts are probably allowed, to, they are assumedly allowed to use the same channels as long as they don't, let's say you have a satellite that's in polar orbit and one that's uh, flying around the equator, maybe a geostationary uh, orbit. They can use the same frequency bands because they're very. it's very unlikely that they're going to interfere with one another just because of the patterns of the way they orbit around the Earth. If you know, leave a comment down below how satellites, if, if satellites are allowed to operate in the same frequency, uh, in the same central frequency and bandwidth as other satellites and how that works, how they don't interfere with one another. I'd love to, to learn more. And also while I'm here, smash that like button, hit the subscribe, it really helps out. I'm shooting these episodes fi uh, five days a week trying to get the channel started and I really appreciate any and all support that you can provide. Well, let's get back into it. Starlink satellites use KU band to connect their terminals to, to users to terminals, connect user terminals. In October, the FCC allowed SpaceX to also provide fixed satellite services from Gen 2 spacecraft using V-band spectrum. So V-band is in the extremely high frequency range. It's in its commercial infancy. Here is a quick look at V-band, so 40 to 75 gigahertz. Uh, not too, too much information here, so very short range Wi-Fi. One of its use cases, wireless broadband. ISPs are looking to uh, implement this probably on their fiber networks yeah. and satellite constellations. Several US, UK, and Canadian companies, Boeing, SpaceX, OneWeb, Telesat, OB3. Where's the Canadian company in that? I'm curious. OneWeb is European or British. Telesat is Canadian. Go us. Let's go. It was founded in 1969. Dang. Very cool. The higher the frequency, the Higher frequency spectrum bands promise more bandwidth and throughput as they become increasingly subject to weather attenuation and other issues. I wonder what the other issues are, weather attenuation makes sense, lots of rain. When you work with Earth, Earth observation satellites, you just get used to taking photos of clouds. It's such a problem. The Earth is, it's like 50% of the time, you, you're like, this is a really important site, let's take a photo. And you take that photo and you're like, that's a cumulus. Great. <laughs> let's just throw that away, all that work. Let's try to try to task uh, that same same place again. It'd be nice if you could just like you know move the clouds out of the way for a second and then bring them back in, let them do their thing. Anyway, last year SpaceX said using E-band radio waves for backhaul would enable Starlink Gen 2 to provide about four times more capacity per satellite than earlier iteration. There are currently more than 5,500 Starlink Gen 2 satellites in orbit. Wow. So they have just under 5,000 Gen 1s and over 5,000 Gen 2s Gen 2s already in orbit. Wow. Uh, according to satellite tracker and astrophysicist J Jonathan McDowell, which are significantly larger and more powerful than Gen 1, but smaller than full-scale versions slated to launch on SpaceX's Starship vehicle, uh, which again, just got permission to fly, in, or they're going to get permission to fly come mid-March, and uh, because they had some, their last rocket went boom, and so they need permission to fly their next rocket. They needed proof that uh, they have actually provided uh, a reasonable safety plan going forwards for their rockets and i believe they have so there you go just once starship starts going up they're going to start launching some more of these gen 2 satellites and for those of you that are not already on their network i know i, I haven't tried it out uh, i'm sure it's going to start competing with your local isp quite strongly i'm curious how they're gonna to try and work in tandem i imagine spacex will mostly do what spacex does and just try to knock other competitors out of the industry by themselves. They, they are a company that isn't afraid to stick to uh, create their own vertical. Like Tesla's the kind of company that designs its own tools. They don't need to go and buy tools from other machine shops and, and get other people to machine their vehicles. They just, hey, if you need a tool, design it in, in shop, we'll, we'll manufacture it here and we can use that new tool to build our cars. It's quite cool. Uh, the FCC continues to defer action over weather to allow SpaceX to deploy the other 22,500 satellites in its proposed Gen 2 
constellation. Okay, let's hop over to the technical hurdles with these radios. So the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. So even small objects like raindrops cause significant dis disruption, said uh, marketing director of ETL Systems. Uh, pandemic, so there is a supply change shortage. However, the reality is that we're rapidly running out of bandwidth in the currently available frequency. Again, just like we're running out of IPv4, IPv4 IP addresses, totally reasonable analogy. And the pace at, width at which we are using it up is only accelerating. Uh, even with the FCC approval, V-band NGSO operators will need landing rights for their countries that they want to serve. So when you, if you want to get in information down to a ground station in Canada or in the US or in France, you need to have the rights to use that radio frequency over that respective country. A country's uh, kind of sovereign territory extends upwards vertically from their land borders. Because of the, the nature of their orbits, these satellites would have to spend a lot of time over Russia where they will need Russian government approval to operate. It's unclear how willing Russia and China and other sizable nations will be to sanction these constellations while planning their own systems. These V-band constellations will also be competing with Starlink, OneWeb, and other NGSO networks aiming to populate these skies in KA and other bands. You know, we have all of these countries that are it's just saying, okay, you're allowed to use this radio band, but how do they coordinate it such that, you know, you get that radio band in all countries? Because, great, your, your radio can support this band for this country but you also will have at some point may want to download or may want to use that band in three or four other countries to increase your throughput as your satellite goes through orbit if you can't do that because that band's already taken up by another company because it seems extremely inefficient so I'm, i assume the general go-to is to say i'm only going to have ground use ground stations in countries a b c d so that you just hyper focus on getting the, the specific frequency uh, in those countries. Here is a uh, public notice, notice. So this is from the FCC talking about how the satellite programs and policies division granted uh, the where was it? That's not f the SpaceX to deploy and operate in the fixed satellite service using V-band frequencies on up to 7,500 7, SpaceX currently authorized second generation Starlink satellites. So if you wanted to see uh, what a, a professional or a government level document looks like for these companies, here you go. thought that was kind of cool. Probably should have shown you this page before talking about radio bands, but here is a, a quick rundown from the ESA. Uh, so starting off in the very short like wavelengths, we have 3 kilohertz going all the way up to the very short wavelengths all the way up here at 300 gigahertz. Uh, typically, you will see satellites operate within this, this UHF to SHF band with some of the VHF, uh, in my experience. Uh, you can see this 1 to 40 gigahertz, which is quite popular from uh, all the way from L to KA band here and quick rundown on the kind of separation of bands so l band for gps s band for weather radar surface ship radar and some communication satellites i would imagine that anything that is that is uh, extremely sensitive to communication downtime would use like smaller lower frequencies so that they don't experience that downtime as much so anything military would try to take up those lower spectrum uh, lower band a lower frequency bands and then anything that is you know really wants that throughput and is willing to experience some downtime because of weather problems weather disruptions let's say would tend towards the higher frequency side of the spectrum these are kind of the engineering trade-offs that you make uh, you know every day c-band primarily used for satellite communications like uh, full-time satellite tv networks x-band uh, used by the military radar applications including continuous wave pulse single polarized dual polarized synthetic aperture radar and phased arrays huh. ku band used for satellite communications assume ground to earth and then ka band which is also communications satellites thank you for using satellite communications and communication and then swapping that around because that's totally a different thing and calling them communication satellites instead uh, this also KA band is used for high resolution, close range targeting radars on military aircraft. Very cool. Thank you so much for sticking around. Smash that like button and we will talk soon. Much love. Bye bye.